Let's have a little look at uh, the new feature that we introduced a couple of weeks ago with, with Mags from Badlands Pods. And um, we, we, we looked at this new feature about what's grinding our gears and what's floating our boats. So let's talk about what's grinding our gears, first of all, what's really getting us hot under the collar, what's, what's really annoying us, what's pissing us off about the wrestling industry and the wrestling business. It could be a particular individual, it could be a match, it could be an angle, it could be a business decision or something that's happening in the wrestling world. But uh, let, let's go over to yourself first then, Jamie, if you don't mind. What's grinding your gears about the wrestling business at the moment then oh man what pisses me off scripted promos oh good subject yeah um i i can't stand it you know, i i just don't like it raw raw i'm obviously specifically raw smackdown where you've got guys memorizing paragraphs and paragraphs how am i going to get invested in that person and their character when they're reading some of that uh a failed Hollywood writer has given them to read. I want that person to be themselves. Like St- Steve Austin always used to say, I was Steve Austin turned up to 100. I was given bullet points and I went out and I was Steve Austin. And what I said was from me. That's what it should be happening now. So scripted promos drive me insane. Absolutely drive me insane. That is what grinds my gears. Um, yeah. I, I can't think of anything else to be honest with you. Yeah, I think otherwise I'm quite as... as a simple guy. <laughs> well, I, I have to agree with you. I mean, whenever I watch an episode of Raw and SmackDown, that's the one thing that really gets me going. Because when I was growing up a fan, you didn't have any of these. You know, they gave you bullet points uh, back in the, the 80s and the 90s. They gave you bullet points. You'd go out there, you'd be your character, you'd, you'd know your character, and you'd know what your, your character would say and what your character would go out there and deliver. And... It worked. I mean, you look at, could you imagine somebody like Jake Roberts being scripted? Or could you imagine somebody like The Rock or Steve Austin or uh, Randy Savage being scripted? Um, I mean, you know, God knows the Ultimate Warrior probably needed to be scripted because he was he just went <laughs> off on a tangent. Uh, but uh, there were a few that probably could have done with a, a Hollywood writer writing for them. But um it, it, it was so much more natural and you bought into the characters when it was unscripted and uh, it made you more invested in them as performers as well as characters and made you more invested in their matches and the product as a whole. Um, but it, it's kind of got to a point now where all the wrestlers sound the same because they're pretty much being written uh, and being vetted by the same group of people backstage. But, but one glimmer of hope though, Jamie, uh, and this will give you a little bit of hope, and I did hear um, on Jerry Lawler's recent podcast, uh, I, I, he mentioned that now that you've got Paul Heyman in charge of Raw and uh, Vince McMahon has kind of taken more of a backseat because he's focusing on the XFL, that P- Paul Heyman has allowed a little bit more free reign into what's being said during these promo segments uh, because that's what he prefers and he knows that's kind of the right thing. So I don't know whether it's kind of wholly noticeable yet on Monday Night Raw, um, but uh, that's something that uh, Jerry Lawler has certainly put out there about the way that Paul Heyman is uh, kind of helping his talent uh, on uh, on Monday Night Raws every single Monday. So that's a bit of a glimmer of hope there for your for your kind of point you've raised during your grinding of your gears. But any thoughts towards that? I, I'm totally on board with that. Paul Heyman is a genius, and. If you've got a guy like Paul Heyman giving you bullet points, you can't go wrong. I mean, if you want to learn how to cut a promo, just watch Paul Heyman. You know, it's, totally. he's, the per- he's the perfect guy to give you tips on how to cut a promo. Uh, you know, give them the bullet points, go out there and do this. Yeah, I'm, I'm totally on board. And I hope that is something that we are going to see. I really, really do. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what's grinding my gears this week then, Jamie. And it's news that kind of broke, I think, last night on SmackDown. There's been rumblings for the last few weeks, but it's the Bella Twins going into the WWE Hall of Fame. Oh, my God, please save us. So both former Divas champions, of course, but they're probably more famous for their lack of ability in the ring and for being reality stars uh, who both got into relationships with top tier WWE talents. Um, The Bellas going into the Hall of Fame is kind of on the same level as a Coco Beware or a Hillbilly Jimmy, in my opinion. Opinion. Um, it's kind of that level of induction, in my opinion. And I'm struggling to figure out what major contribution they've had to the business, apart from possibly promoting WWE on their reality shows, of course. Uh, the Bellas were part of an era where, where divas were considered a bit of a dirty word. And uh, you'll probably you know, get whoever is inducting them on the night at the Hall of Fame 
and tell the audience that they were pioneers of the women's division. Um, you know, the women's division we know today. No, they weren't. They, they, they couldn't execute basic moves without e- injuring themselves or without injuring their opponents. And in my opinion, they should be deleted from the history books due to their crimes to the wrestling industry as a whole and not be celebrated in the WWE Hall of Fame. So uh, your thoughts on my, on my kind of topic this week, the Bella Twins going into the Hall of Fame. Yeah, I, I'm I'm kind of on board with you to be honest. Um, I don't have anything personal against them, but I do not think for a second that they are Hall of Fame worthy. When right. when you look at the Hall of Fame and there's people like Luna Vashan who is not in there yet, you know Victoria, Molly Holly, and the Bella Twins are going in before them. I'm yeah. sorry, I just I'm not buying into that at all. The Hall of that it's just it's it's a publicity stunt. I, I don't. Whoever designed on the Bellas, I'm lost for words, mate. I can't even. I'm, I'm, I'm with you <laughs> completely. With you, I'm sorry. Like you said, you've got Luna Vachan who's not in there yet, and Molly Holly, yeah. a Victorian. You know, why are these girls in there? It's it's a it's baffling, baffling, man. I just last oh, year with Tori Wilson was bad enough, but now the Bellas. I'm I'm sorry, just. Yeah. yeah, I'm not. I'm not with this one at all. I, I really. Yeah. And again, nothing, nothing personal against them, but they're not Hall of Fame worthy. Absolutely not. No. I mean, on the plus side, I mean, you look at the people that have also been announced. Um, NWO, which I think is a deserving inclusion into the Hall of Fame. Batista, yeah. of course. And then there's rumblings that uh, Jushin Thunder Liger and the British Bulldog David Boy Smith are also going to be inducted. So I'll be happy with those four and maybe, you know, one yeah. or two other credible uh, names thrown well, in there. But uh, the, the Bella have, Twins, I think I, that's going to be my toilet break to the Hall of Fame this year. I have also heard uh, there's rumblings of JBL going in this year as well. OK, yeah, yeah. Which I'm OK with that. Definitely, yeah. And uh, if they can throw in a, a Bam Bam Bigelow or a Vader, uh, then yeah. I'll be uh, doubly happy. I think those two are a long overdue entry into the Hall of Fame. But uh, there we go. So let, let's kind of flip the tide, so to speak. Let's have a look at uh, what's floating in your boat. So, so Jamie, what, what's kind of really turning you on? What's kind of making you excited for the wrestling product? What's floating your boat at the moment about the wrestling industry as a whole then? Well, I think we touched on it earlier on in the show. Um... Three simple letters, NWA. That that is what is that is just the best thing in the world for me at the moment is the NWA. If if people aren't watching it, I highly recommend they do. It's an hour of wrestling. Our wrestling show should be done. Um, and it's just a joy to watch. I get lost in the moment for an hour. It's just a wonderful, wonderful show. It's produced perfectly. It's got the right guys. Um and it just, I as daft as it sounds, obviously wrestling's one of them things that it's always been there for me. Because I, again, like a lot of people, I've I've suffered with anxiety and depression over the years, and wrestling's that one constant for me. And at the minute, it, the NWA power is it's really affirmed my love for the the world of professional wrestling. Yeah. That's a fantastic topic and uh, very well put. And uh, another subject that we kind of alluded to and touched on earlier on during our AEW review, but uh, what's floating my boat this week are the super hot crowds at AEW Dynamite. Uh, they, they, you know, they've been hot since day one, uh, despite pictures of half empty arenas. Uh, you wouldn't know it due to their infectious enthusiasm and noise that they generate on a weekly basis. When you compare the AEW crowd at Dynamite to NXT at full sale, it really is night and day as much as I love um, um, NXT. Um, I've gone on record as saying that I think NXT um, in full sale every single week is hurting their overall product and they need to get on the road and they need to perform in front of a fresh um, set of eyes on a regular basis. When, when you compare that to, you know, AEW, uh, when you when you kind of flick in between the channels, say as a casual viewer, and you kind of flick in between NXT and AEW, and you come across the full sale crowd, and you flick over to Dynamite. You've got the the Dynamite crowd there that are really loud, really into it, really enthusiastic. Um, you know, it, it really does kind of send out a clear message that the the atmosphere of AEW and the, the product is potentially bigger and better. Um, and uh, you know, if I was a casual viewer, I'd know that I'd stick on AEW purely because of the fans. You know, they get involved in the matches. They dress up, they have fun. 
you know, they get involved in the entrances as well. So, I mean, with Jericho's entrance singing Judas, uh, they're really, really loud and over the top when Cody comes out, when John Moxley comes out, that's always electric. And uh, as much as I love NXT and always have done, I'm starting to get fed up with kind of the smart fans at Full Sail sitting on their hands during fantastic matches and trying to get themselves over with their own funny chants um, that uh, were maybe funny a few years ago, but not so much nowadays. But uh, what's floating my boat at the moment, Jamie, are the crowd in AEW. Yeah, and I, I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, like I said, I get goosebumps from a good crowd when there's an atmosphere. Um, me, Callum and Kurt were lucky enough to go to All In in Chicago. And I, had, I literally had goosebumps before I'd even got to my seat. The electricity in the in the arena, the the crowd, you know, it was a it was a Chicago crowd as well, but that that crowd made it. It was like you felt like you was a part of something, and um, I'm totally with you, man. It, it's all about a good crowd. A good crowd makes a good show. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, a few interesting topics uh, we discussed there in uh, what's grinding my gears and what's floating my boat. We'll have the, more of the same next week, so make sure that you check that out. 